from the Aria Resort in Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Marketplace. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are at AWS reInvent 2018. We got to get a number. I don't know how many people are here, but Vegas is packed. I think it's in six different venues tonight. We're at the Aria, uh, at the hub. We're at the AWS Marketplace and Service Catalog Experience, kicking everything off. We're excited to be joined by CUBE alumni. Last time we saw them, I think it was in San Francisco Summit 2017. Carl Krupitzer, the CEO of ThingLogic. Carl, great to see you. Thank you, it's great to be here. So I think you were saying before we turned the cameras on, you came early days. This, this, whole, this right. whole piece here was not right. even as big as the room we're in. Right, well we were part of the service launch for IoT and that was just a few years ago and it's exponentially bigger. Yeah, the, the, just the expo, this is not even the expo floor, right? And this is bigger right. than what we had originally. So. Right. So exciting I, to see it grow. So IoT keeps growing, growing, growing. That's all we hear about in industrial IoT. We did the industrial IoT launch with GE back in better days right. for them. Um, huge opportunity, really seeing a lot of momentum. What are some of the observations you're seeing actually out in the marketplace? You know, it's interesting. When we first started with the IoT service, with service offering for AWS, there was a lot of proof of concepts going on, a lot of you know, people kind of hacking their way through understanding what IoT is and how it could impact their business. And I think we've gotten to the point now where we're seeing more production rollouts with very considerate business, uh, you know, business drivers behind it. Right. I think it's, it's funny, you're talking about uh, doing some research for this thing. You guys are, are really specific, I love it. It's not greenfield projects, you know. Have specific design objectives, have specific KPIs, have specific kind of ideas about what the functionality you want before you just kind of jump into the IoT space with two feet. Right, right. Yeah, we strongly discourage companies from just jumping in with both feet just because, right? right. It's, a, it's an expensive undertaking, IoT, and it's, uh, it, it has the potential to really change your business for the, for the better if you do it so well. So where, where are you seeing the most uptick, or maybe that surprises you the most in, in these early days, you know, industry-wise? We see a lot of creative use cases starting to come up, kind of that secondary use of, of data, and you know, one of the things that we've, we, we kind of describe our customers having a, a, a life cycle of, of IoT, right? They come in to solve a specific problem with us, which is usually a scalability or a, you know, a go-to-market um, issue, and then very quickly they kind of get to the art of the possible, like what can we do next? Um, and we see a lot of companies really getting creative with the way they do things from you know, um, charging, with using RFID tags in Sub-Saharan Africa for water to solar power and things like that. It's, it's interesting to see companies that didn't exist a few years ago and couldn't have existed a few years ago really kind of getting a lot of traction. Right. right. It's funny, we did an interview with Zebra uh, Sports a few years ago actually now and they're the ones that, this old RFID technology that put the pads in the shoulder pads for right. all the NFL players, they're, they're on the refs, they're in the balls. It is such a, such a cool way to you know, apply an old technology um, to a new application and then really open up this completely different kind of consumer experience in watching sports when you've got all this additional data about how fast are they running and right. what's their acceleration. And I think they had one example where they showed a guy on an interception, they had the little line tracker before he'd gotten all the way back in, it was a pick six. It's unbelievable. Right, no, our, mid, our Middle Eastern group is actually doing a, uh, a pilot uh, right now for camel racing. So we're doing telemetry attached to the, the camels that are running around the tracks. So we're getting speed and heart rate and those sorts of things. So it's, it's, actually, it's everywhere, right? <laughs> I love it, camel yeah. racing. So we're here at the AWS Marketplace Experience. Um, so tell us a little bit about you know, how's it working with AWS? How's the, you know, kind of the marketplace fit within your entire kind of go-to-market strategy? Well, so for us, the, the, the marketplace is really key to our go-to-market strategy, right? I mean, we're a small company and we, um, you know, our, our sales team is really kind of focused on helping customers solve problems and the, the marketplace really offers us the ability to not have to deal with a lot of the infrastructure things of servicing a customer, right? They can go there, they can self-sign up, they can implement the platform, um, our, our technology platform on their own and then billing is taken off of our plate, right? So it's not something that we have to have a bunch of resources dedicated to. Right. Is there still a big services component though that you still have to come in to help them, as you say, kind of define you know, nice projects and, and, and good KPIs and you know, kind of good places to start? Or do they, they oftentimes on a marketplace purchase just go off to the races on their own? So it's a, it's a combination, right? If companies are looking to solve a specific problem with an IoT platform like Foundry, uh, it's definitely a self-implementable thing and it's becoming more and more 
self-implementable, right? Foundry um, really deploys into a customer's account using CloudFormation, and CloudFormation templates allow us to kind of create these customized solutions that can then be deployed, right? So it's, it, we're getting a combination of both. Yeah, and I would imagine it's taking you in all kinds of markets that you just don't, you just don't have the manpower to cover when you have a distribution partner right. like AWS. Right, yeah, it's, it's, it's made things a lot faster for us to be able to spin up you know, vertical solutions or specific offerings for a particular large customer. Marketplace can, can take care of all of the, uh, yeah, the infrastructure right. around that. All right, so what are you looking for here at reInvent 2018? You've been coming to these things for right. a while. I know Andy's tweeting out his, his keynote is, is ready. They had the chicken wing contest, I think, last night at midnight. Too late for me, I didn't make it. Well, for, <laughs> for us, I mean, some of the more exciting things that are, that are out there, the emergence of serverless, right? It's really, we can see serverless, all of those uh, AWS services really taking off. Right. Um, but there's also the, you know, Sumerian, the AR, VR is really kind of exploding. Um, so for us it's really about, this is a great place for us to see the direction that AWS is heading and then make sure that our offering and our technology is layered on top of that appropriately. Right. And what are you hearing from your customers about Edge, right? All the talk about Edge and there's some FUD I think going about, you know, how does Edge work with, with cloud? And to me it's like two completely separate you know, technology applications depending on what you're trying to accomplish. But as, as, as kind of the buzzwords Edge gets beyond the buzz and actually starts to be implemented. What are you kind of seeing and how's that working together with some of the services that Amazon's got? I mean, edge architectures are an important component to a solution, especially solutions that require real-time uh, data processing and decision making at the, at the shop floor or whatever you would have. Um, AWS has taken very big strides toward creating service offerings and products down at the edge that interface well with the cloud. So for us, our perspective on it is that the, the edge is really a reflection of the business logic and the processes and, and things that we define and build for a customer. Because ultimately, those edge processes have to feed the enterprise processes, which is what we really focus on, right? How do we get machine data into enterprise systems? Um, so edge technology for us is definitely a consideration and when we build our technology solutions, we look at Edge as a component of that architecture and you know, we try to meet the needs of the customer specific use case when it comes to Edge right. solutions. Yeah, it's not, it's not killing the cloud, who right. said that, it's silly. Yeah, it can't <laughs> kill it. It's not, it's not slowing down this thing. Right. <laughs> no. All right, Carl, well thanks for, uh, for taking a few minutes and have a great uh, reInvent. Yeah, thank you. Hydrate, time. hydrate, they Definitely. say hydrate. Yeah, All right, he's Carl, I'm Jeff, you're watching theCUBE. We're at AWS Marketplace and Service Catalog Experience. We're at the Aria and the Quad, stop on by. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.